It's almost incredible how much shit Biden's been taking for his multitude of failings, but I never thought that he would eventually lose the support of his big business friends. Uh, one that you could see coming was the, the CEO of Goya. You guys remember Goya Beans? They were the ones who came out in support of President Trump towards uh, the 2020 election. They caught a lot of shit for it, and then, you know what, hey, Ivanka Trump came out and made that very odd post with her holding a can of Goya beans and then Chelsea Handler's, you know, spinster ass uh, did something cringy. I remember her doing something, but whatever. I don't know. Hopefully take that can and fucking hammer it in her cunt. But regardless, our bean bro here is sounding the alarm that Biden's a failure and food shortages are coming because it's a first world country for as long as it matters in 2022. And we're going to experience a food shortage. Cool. Uh, policies leading to the war on fossil fuels as well as the Russian invasion of Ukraine. No, no, that's kind of like blaming everything in the past two years on the coof when in actuality it was the government's response to that which is the problem. So if we just go ahead and rebrand that accurately, I'd be happier. Anyways, uh, contribute to the food crisis according to Robert Uane. Unane. There we go. President and CEO of Goya Foods. We are on the precipice of a food shortage. Russia and Ukraine together produce half of the fertilizer used in the United States and fertilizer prices have quadrupled like so many other things, Unane said to Epoch Times Crossroad Program. However, the food, oh, the fourfold surge in food, uh, fertilizer prices will affect the African and European countries more severely than the United States because the latter is currently more independent in regards to food, Unane said, with the big problem being that uh, planting season in southeastern Ukraine and people are fighting a war. Yeah, no, exactly. Two and a half million acres of sunflowers to be planted, he said. Farmers there will be planting less and yielding less because of the rising costs and the lack of good yield. It's going to send food prices spiraling. Both Ukraine and Russia are major producers of the world's wheat and corn. Together, they account for about 29% of the global wheat exports, 19% of global corn supply, and 80% of global sunflower oil export, er, exports. Well, personally, as a, food, as a health food enthusiast, I'm glad that less sunflower oil is going to be out there. But then also for like mass produced food and anything that you can buy readily off the shelves, which most people consume anyways, sunflower oil and those types of oils are very important to those foods. So that's just going to drive up the price of everything. So, And then in response to that, all of the foods that don't use those types of shitty oils are just going to raise their price because they're going to have the opportunity to do it. So... Well, directly, I won't be consuming any more, any less sunflower oil, because I've pretty much worked that out of my diet anyways. Same with wheat and oil, but it's still bad. That's obviously going to affect a lot of people. Because sunflower oil, canola oil, palm seed oil, a whole bunch of that stuff is very prevalent, okay? Those are those mixed vegetable oils, mixed seed oils that you see. If you look at the ingredients packages that's on there, that's what's in there. And 80% of it is being contested in some form or fashion. That's tough. That's very tough. Moreover, the irrigation system in southeastern Ukraine has been bombed. Yes, in ports. Mariupol, a uh, port in the Azov Sea has already been cut off. Yeah, no, uh, Ukraine's still holding on, holding on, and they're releasing some videos from drone footage showing uh, these missile att it's so fucked but whatever there's a legit or er, conflict going on and food shortages because of a lack of ingredients is going to be a real possibility very much a real possibility but again this is from a biased source right this is the ceo of goya foods he's a proud trump supporter so probably easily a, a white supremacist or something like that but why would the uh, gold or Goldman Sachs CEO, oh, he's the ex CEO, right? Warns Americans to prepare for an economic recession. Oh, so he's also taking a bellwether of the country, and uh, in response to that, saying, uh, "Get your shit right because uh, we're heading into the tank." But yeah, statements like that is why you're the ex CEO and not the current CEO, right? <laughs> Former Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, oy vey, said the people should be prepared for an economic recession amid in uh, elevated inflation and record high gas prices. When asked during a CBS interview Sunday, former CEO Lloyd Blankfein said Americans should brace for a dim economic future. Blankfein 
uh, is the head of the investment banking firm from uh, Goldman Sachs between 2006 and 18. I was in charge of the uh, 2008 economic downturn. He oversaw and taking the company by the company taking a $10 billion treasury department uh, troubled asset relief program around the same time. Yeah, and who is that from? Who who was the president and who was, uh, importantly, the vice president at the time in charge of turning around the economy? Yeah, exactly. It's definitely a risk, he said. If we are running a big company, I would be very prepared uh, for it. If I was a consumer, I'd be prepared for it, but it's not baked in the cake. Some of the poorest Americans will feel the worst effects of the inflation, he said, adding oh, that a recession is a very, very high risk factor. It's going to be hard for people to have uh, savings, Blankfield said, but uh, they already have savings and they're not going to unnecessarily increase it quickly because of inflation. Uh, and they're going to start, oh, but they're starting in a much better place than we were back then. Yeah, at least people can see it on the horizon, okay? You can just try to close your eyes and plug your ears and go, na 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 but it's eventually going to be coming. So either knowing this terrible economic situation is on the horizon, you can plan for it and thrive through it and ride out the wave, or you can just cower in fear, okay? Just take it all to the fucking mattresses, stuff all of your paychecks and take all of your savings out of the banks, which might collapse, throw it under the mattress, and then realize at one point or another, all your money is going to mean fuck all when everything costs four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times as much as it previously did. So yeah, sitting on a million dollars ain't going to mean shit when filling up your tank is going to be a thousand dollars around. Not saying that's coming. I'm not saying that's also off the table. It's not going to be hard for people. And how comfortable are we oh, now to rely on the supply chain with those within the borders of the United States and we can't control? Blank, fin blank fine said. <clears throat> Do we feel good about getting all of our semiconductors from Taiwan, which is again an object of China? Oh yeah, we're just waiting also for that. Like you're planning for the recession. Okay, waiting for the conflict in Ukraine to finish. What about when China eventually invades Taiwan? Because that's on the horizon as well. He added, apparently referring to Chinese regime's threats against the self-governed -govern country in recent months. But I think the Fed has very powerful tools. It's hard to, ref or to finally tune them. And it's hard to see the effects of them quickly enough to alter it. But I think they're responding well, and it's definitely a risk. Yes, last week, uh, Fed Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell acknowledged that increasing interest rates will include some pain, but added that a far worse outcome would be for the prices to continue spiking. Yup, exactly. So at one point, the rubber's eventually going to hit the road. But he also made a very pertinent point here that's uh, blank fine, okay? Controlling what you can inside the borders of the United States. But what about the largest company within the United States? What about Amazon? Now, what are they saying about the situation? What, what, what's the CEO, okay? Or I guess the former CEO, right? The second richest. And he's very pissed off about the fact that he's the second richest man in the world. Jeff Bezos criticizes Biden's administration on inflation and misdirection. Ha, huh. ha. Huh. One of the biggest supporters of the Biden administration and the Democratic Party overall was Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Just look at his contributions to the Democratic Party for proof of concept on that one. So now all of a sudden, reading the room, realizing that, yeah, the party ain't all that fucking popular after all. Jeff Bezos, the billionaire founder of Amazon, wrapped up his criticism of President Joe Biden on May 15th, saying that the misdirection coming from the White House isn't helping the country. Ye Hi, sure glad this dick-shaped human being is finally saying some truth. Bezos, like many economists, Bezos is an economist now? Okay, I thought he was just a space enthusiast and a turtle wax aficionado. Uh, criticized the administration's attempt to stoke an already overheated economy with further stimulus. Now he said inflation mostly harms the poor. True, true. In fact, the administration tried hard to inject even more stimulus into the already overheated inflationary economy, and only West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin uh, saved them from themselves, he wrote on Twitter. Fair enough. Inflation is a regressive task or er, tax that hurts the most affluent. Oh, that hurts the least affluent. Sorry. Words are hard. Misdirection doesn't help the country. Yeah, no, exactly. The statement from Bezos was in response to a thread on Twitter in which Biden claimed credit for the reduction of the federal budget deficit. 
Cool, great. That's the same talking point that uh, California is running on right now. Oh, we're doing so good with our money. Don't mind the fact that everything's being hollowed out around you, but this isn't specifically about California. This is a much bigger situation. Statement from Bezos. Oh, I'm sorry. I went on to say, under my predecessor, the deficit increased every single year. Biden wrote on Twitter, somebody wrote for him on Twitter, on May 14th. This year, we're on track to cut the deficit by $1.5 trillion. The biggest one-year decline ever. Well, after the fact that it skyrocketed, but whatever. Okay, don't worry about any of that. But again, you're on track. But again, you were also on track for a bunch of other things in your camp during your presidency so far, like uh, job creation, uh, economic growth, and how did that on track numbers when eventually the reports came out? Yeah, less said about that, the better. Matters to families because reducing the deficit is one of the main ways we can ease inflationary pressures. However, critics have contended er, that Biden is distorting reality when he says that there's, oh, that he's directly responsible for the decline in the deficit when, in fact, government ex expenditures have been increasing from extremely high levels because at the end of the temporary pandemic relief spending. This is the second time recently the Biden or the Bezos has criticized the Biden administration. Amazon founders earlier criticized a, a Biden Twitter post over inflation and business taxes. You want to bring down inflation? Let's make sure the wealthiest corporations pay their fair share. Biden wrote on Twitter on May 13th, which is a retarded proposition. Response to the post, Bezos said how blaming companies was misdirection and that the president should be subject to his own disinformation board. Huh actually agree with a uh, great value dr evil the newly created disinformation board should review this tweet or maybe they need to form a new non-sequitur board instead raising corporation taxes is fine to discuss taming inflation is critical to discuss mushing them together is just misdirection yeah exactly and again we could go into the finer details about the dumbness which isn't really a word but the improper application that uh, oh if corporations would just pay their fair share and if we raise the corporate tax rate that's going to make everything so much better we could go into the finer details of that and realize that that's just stupid and you're incentivizing these big businesses you know the job creators that are out there to just get the fuck out okay to go to a tax even country that's out there like ireland's hiring okay that's just one that immediately pops off the head when it comes to corporate tax rates but if you want just like a simple explanation of the facts nobody's ever got a job from a poor person okay you tax the job creators out you're gonna get rid of the middle class okay because all of those jobs are going to disappear so you're just gonna have the have yachts and the have nots and right now you have one of the have yachts out there saying that you're doing some fuck shit okay not in this flowery terminology but he's trying to sound the alarm out there that joe you're fucking up dude you should probably you know what hey just shoot straight here but you're not going to okay or the you know intern that runs your twitter account they're not going to be hip to this concept that paying your fair share is not an actionable message it sounds good to your base your 20 year old base that has no life experience and it has no outside view and what they're being indoctrinated at college with okay they have no idea of how the world actually works they're just trying to comport it to just look at whatever the fuck of a ideological black hole that they've created for themselves and then just try to project it onto the world but hey, maybe all these guys are just sounding the alarm for somebody who's never going to hear it anyways because he's old and his mind is fucked. But with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.